Right, releasing a video later on today, um, and quite a few people have asked me about the videos, previous videos, where I've been poking around, sort of like, transistor's good, that one's no good, how I do it. And this is how I've done it for years, I don't know if it's right, if you've got a better way, let me know. Clearly, if they're on the board, they're in circuit, then you have to take into account some of the alternative current paths, but generally speaking, this is a really good way of checking to see whether a transistor has got an open circuit junction or a short circuit junction, okay? and thereby just say that transistor's no good, or it's an MPN, or it's a PNP, trying to work out what it is. Right, so if we look at a transistor, of a typical transistor, anyway, so there's a there's a uh, transistor um, collector base emitter. It's obviously a, uh, an NPN transistor because the, uh, <coughs> the emitter has the arrow pointing away from the actual base. Um, and the equivalent circuit is that. It's because it's an NPN, it's an N junction with a P junction, and an N, and it's a basically um, a block of N silicon with some P-doping in it um, for the gate. But crudely speaking, this is a transistor. And of course, everyone knows that um, on a NPN transistor, the collector would be positive, the emitter would be negative usually in the circuit, biased. And then by passing a small current down the base, you can actually have a multiple of that current coming down through the collector emitter path. It's a current multiplier, basically. That's what the HFE, or the current gain, and you arrange your circuit so that the um, the voltage gain of an amplifier circuit is all calculated on basically what the current's doing. It's a current amplifier, okay? And you can almost think of it as if you hold this current, the base current constant, and it's not saturated, you can almost think of this as a constant current uh, route from positive to negative, or actually negative to positive where the electrons are flowing. Right, so that's the actual circuit, and that's the transistor, the what it is inside and then what we can do is draw an equivalent circuit as far as static DC is concerned remember we're not talking about the HFE or anything like that we're just talking about um, the static testing with a DC multimeter and most of the multimeters I don't know if you can see it on here you can't really see it it's got a diode forward voltage drop and uh, across these two probes should get some more light on this bloody subject shall we that's better Yeah, so on these two probes you've got the meter and there's a voltage being applied across this and um, this is positive, that's negative. Um, if I just put this into this meter and put it on volts, DC, put them in there. You can see, you can't see, <laughs> God, bloody, this meter is rubbish, but it says 2.69 volts, okay, so you've got 2.69 volts across these probes on their open circuit, and as you, um, you know, apply a voltage or resistor or something which is limiting the voltage, the voltage will be directly displayed on the meter display, which is up in the top right-hand corner. So this is the equivalent of an, N an NPN transistor in a static way, it's just basically two diodes connected, that is wrong actually. That is wrong. That should be that way around. Okay. So if you were buzzing this transistor out in a circuit, you would expect to see that circuit there, providing there wasn't any other leakage or you know components in the path providing an alternative path, which you're gonna have to work that out sometimes. So to give you a demonstration of this, I've just uh, <laughs> put that circuit on this, it's not very complicated, that circuit onto this piece of paper. And then if we meter these things, look, if you select the, uh, put your, find out which one the base is, and put your negative probe on the base, you get no current flow, okay, no voltage, okay. Now being an NPN, most of them are silicon NPN these days, so you'll get a between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, 0 0.8 volt drop, usually 0.65. So 600 millivolt drop across a forward bias junction, that's a normal diode forward voltage drop. So on an NPN transistor, if you take your positive lead, put it on the base, and then check the collector, you'll get roughly about 700 millivolts, between 600 and 750, 770, something like that, as you can see. And then you put it on the emitter, again, you're going to get around the same voltage, maybe slightly less, 765. And then if you meter between these two, there should be nothing, okay? And there isn't. So you can, you know that it's a PMP if you see this, base collector, that, base emitter, 
and there's no shorts. If there was a shortage uh, base collector short, um, you'd get obviously a short, naught volts or a buzz as well if you had the buzzer switched on. And uh, likewise with the uh, base emitter joint, if that was short, you'd get the same. And you, when you when you meter across base and collector, you probably would get some, um, you know, readings from the rest of the circuit. But what you're really looking for is the 700 millivolts, 750 millivolts, uh, or a short. And if you've got a short, you need to investigate because the transistor could have been fried. Or if you've got some leakage in reverse, then look at the circuitry and see whether it could be coming down some other components. And then you might have to disconnect a component, or remove a resistor in the collector or the base or something to to check it properly but very good quick fast indicator and of course if we go for a PMP transistor that's just exactly the same but the junctions are reversed so on the PMP transistor if you put the negative lead on the base you get your 765 millivolts it's just a complementary uh, reverse uh, of the uh, NPN and there you go and then again no connection across base emitter and if you had a short the same thing would happen right so here a minute ago were two transistors I'd sorted out, which had been swept aside. All right, so what we got here is a couple of transistors on tele macro mode, and uh, yeah, we're just going to determine what what what's what here. Look, so I've got the red, red. It's a bit dark, isn't it? All right, okay. So you got red lead, black lead. Uh, you can see that the uh, voltage is changing on the thing, that's correct. Yeah, so should I start that again? No, we'll do a... All right, so two transistors, one's an MPN, one's a PMP, which one's which, and what's what, which is which we lead, okay? So we've got red, red in the right, blue in the left, or black in the left. Let's move it over there a bit. Oh, bugger you. All right, so SOT23 packages. Okay, let's try these two legs together. Nothing at all, okay? No connection. Let's try reversing that. Oop. That way around. That way around. So neither of those two can be the base, can they? So the base must be down here, right? So let's try the negative on the base. So the positive on the base. No flow. So let's try the negative on the base. So there's our 700 millivolts. So this has got the negative on the base, which is the left one. If I just go to the collector, there, you've got 700 millivolts again. So there's your two junctions. So the one on the left, which is the black connection, negative, is on the base. So the negative connector of the uh, meter is on the base. It must be this is the PMP transistor. This is the PMP transistor. That's the emitter. That's the collector, and if I meter between the emitter and collector, there should be no connection. And there isn't, all right? So that's that's the um, that's the PMP, that one. And then looking at this one, which is going to be the MPN, because <laughs> it was one of each. But anyway, so we go the same way on here, nothing at all. Nothing at all there either. And if we swap over and put the positive lead on the what we now know is the base. Except I've got it around the wrong way, it must be that one. There you go, positive lead on the base. We have 0.747 and so we know that this one is the base and if we turn that around that way, if we can get around the back there, I'm not sure if I can. And there's the other junction, okay. So we know this is the base, we know that's the collector, that's the emitter. And if we just um, meter between the collector and the emitter, there should be no shorts, okay? There should be no shorts between any of them. But you can check those two junctions. And in general, generally speaking, if you've got a uh, circuit and they, you haven't got a short or some kind of leakage which you can't explain, i.e. a slightly broken down junction usually they just fail complete short circuit so you'll get something like 100 millivolts or 200 millivolts and you look at the circuitry you know you have to be careful but a dead short or you know one of the junctions open circuit you cannot get any conductivity between the base and the collector or the emitter it means that the junction's blown open circuit so 
just by fiddling about with the meter you can pretty much zip through a board and I'm going to do that later on in the CTEC video so I've done this first so that you know what I'm doing and I don't have to explain it at the time. So there you are, that's how to test a PMP or an MPN transistor and get a pretty good idea as to whether it's got shorted junctions or open circuit junctions or it's not working. You have to be a bit careful and mindful of the circuitry because if it's in circuit at the time you might get some alternative paths but you know, on the occasion where you do get a very low, say there's a 10 ohm resistor between the uh, collector and emitter or something, then you're going to get the 10 ohm path, aren't you? So you're going to have to remove, unhook that resistor and then test the transistor. But by and large, certainly in power circuits, they're usually open circuit completely, exploded on the top, or they've been shorted, and you're getting a, you know, a conductivity which is the same in both directions, which is much higher conductivity than would you expect from the normal forward voltage drop of the junction. Right, well anyway, that's that. So if you um, enjoyed the video, then uh, just hit the uh, subscribe button and leave me a like if you like. And a uh, day or so, maybe later on today, I'll, re I'll release the latest CTEC, which is a very long blown, long winded uh, repair video of a CTEC battery charger, complete with all the schematics and the explanation of the schematics. So to help you on your way with your own repairs, hopefully. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, that's me signing off.